Good evening, good morning, Toastmasters and guests. Welcome to Interpersonal Toastmasters Club. This meeting is going to be a special one for you. And I would like to request us to remember that we will not be speaking about faith, religion, or politics. If you are not speaking, kindly mute your mic. I would like to welcome the president of this club to adjourn the meeting. Over to you, President Jim Denson. Thank you so much, Catherine, and welcome to everyone. Thank you for attending our meeting tonight. It is always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. And as Catherine said, you're in for an outstanding meeting tonight. And to introduce us and guide us through the proceedings tonight will be the Toastmaster of the evening, DTM Susan Schultz. Let's give her a hand. Thank you, Mr. President. First, I would like to say a great big welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I would also like to have our guests be recognized. We have two guests today, and both of them will be speakers, so we're thrilled by that. Uh, Sparsh is a returning guest. Would you please tell us where you're dialing in from? Uh, yes, Susan. Uh, I'm Sparsh from Stagecoach Hyderabad Toastmasters, dialing in from Hyderabad, India. Wonderful. Thank you for returning and being a guest speaker for us today. And we also have Satish Menon, who is new to us, first time visiting. He's going to be presenting an educational session. Could you please tell us where you're dialing in from? You need to unmute. Uh, I'm dialing in from uh, Chennai, which is south of India. And I belong to District uh, 120 of Toastmasters International. Well, welcome. We're so grateful to have you here today. Since you are all seasoned Toastmasters, I will forego the explanation of all of the various functionary roles other than to identify who they are. First up, we have our grammarian, Natalia. Since she is brand new at Toastmasters, we're actually going to have her describe her role as well as part of her practice for today and give us a word of the day. Please help me welcome Natalia. Thanks. Right. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Susan. Um, the word of the day is going to be astonishing, meaning extremely surprising or impressive. Just going to drop that in the chat for you guys so everybody has access. Um, and so uh, my job, um, my job is to catch incorrect use of grammar, misuse of words, run on sentences, past and present tense, um, past and present tense incorrectly used, um, and pregnant pauses. Um, I will offer the correct pronunciation or grammar um, for each case that I come across. Um, and I will also give feedback when a creative phrase is utilized. Back to you, Toastmaster Susan. Thank you, Natalia. And that was well done. For our other functionaries, I'm just going to make you aware of who they are, since we all know what they're going to be doing. As one is our awe counter for today, Catherine Wave. Thank you, Catherine. And our timer for today was Namitha. So she is going to be showing the backgrounds of, depending on the time slots for the speeches. And since you are all experienced Toastmasters, we'll just do a reminder when we get to the point of our table topics and our evaluations. But let's move on first. I'd like to start the meeting off with surprise. Do you like surprises? I must say, I was not one of those people that liked surprises. I liked my life planned out, get the planner, color coded, know where I'm going every day, every moment and really plan it out and fill that day with good things that I choose. 
Unfortunately, life does not always go according to plan. And some surprises are a little disappointing. I'll share with you one experience. I went on a tour of Europe with adult Girl Scouts visiting five countries. And it was a delightful experience. And we got to our final country and it was France. We landed in Paris and it was my birthday. I get to sign into my room in the hotel and they attempt to tell me we're with a group of 45 people. My husband and I are part of this large entourage. And they tell me, Madame, we do not have your reservation. I'm like, whoa, surprise. I'm in Paris and I have no place to go. Where will I stay? And they said, not to worry, Madame, we find you something. So I was not going to be on the one or two floors that our group had so we could be rowdy and raucousy and celebrating and partying. They put us in a different part of the hotel. I said, that's okay as long as I can find my friends when we're leaving. I get into my room and all of the others were on room second or third floor facing the pool, lovely scene. I open up the curtains to my room. I'm on the ninth floor and I'm staring at the Eiffel Tower. And I'm thinking, surprise! Although the first surprise didn't work out according to plan, this one was even better than I could possibly have planned. Ooh la la, let's enjoy the surprises when they come our way. And sometimes those surprises are even better than we had planned for. So I'm going to move on to our meeting today. We have our first speaker, Sparsh, and he is going to be evaluated by Jim Denson. Jim, do you have his speech information? Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster of the evening. Sparsh will be speaking from the Pathways Level 4, let's see, Managing Change is the project. And the purpose of the project is for him to practice developing a change management plan. His speech tonight is entitled, Change is the Only Constant, and the timing will be from five to seven minutes. Thank you, Jim. Please help me welcome Sparsh Jane with Change is the Only Constant. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmasters. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear guests and fellow Toastmasters, have you ever found in life that you were in a situation, no matter how much effort you put in, it seemed like the things were getting downhill? Well, I certainly have been in that kind of situation. And with that, I got into a story of transformation, resilience, leadership. And I hope with that particular story, you all will resonate today. As Vice President of Education of my Toastmasters Club, I face a daunting challenge that once our vibrant club now has started to lose its luster, even it felt like we were navigating through rough waters in this dark ocean. The quality of our meetings started degrading to the point where even our most active members started thinking about whether it's worth their value to join our meetings. It's worth their value of time. I embarked on this mission to turn things around that I said, I'm going to change everything and we are going to become a thriving club. However, things didn't happen as per the plan. Also, I started to go to 
clubs with very good meetings. And I started to realize, even if these clubs with so limited resources can do so good, why can't we do something like that? And I started on my first mission. That is, we created a plan to work diligently. And this mission was called Mission Diligent Work. As all of the executive committee members in our club, or the EC members, as they say, they decided that we are going to stick to our roles and responsibilities. And before every meeting, every week, we are going to do our work diligently. And as per the plan, if everyone completes their roles and responsibilities, then we will have a very good, a very active, and a very energetic club. However, when we started to work, the meetings didn't get any better. And the frustration became to de demoralize even the executive committee members that we have. And after countless discussions, it became clear that our approach needed some fundamental shift. I realized that if we see these new clubs who do not have enough resources and they are doing good, then maybe we are doing something fundamentally wrong in what we are doing. And then which bring us to the second and the critical mission that we embarked on. The mission of bringing life to our meetings and adding value to the people who join our meeting in their lives. And then I and the other EC members, what all decided is that we will go and talk with people, the members of our club, the guests they attend, they attended, that how they feel about our club, why are they attending, or what are the incentives, and what are one or two things that we can do in our meeting, before our meeting, during our meeting, or after our meeting, to help with improving the lives of the people. And at the same time, we started analyzing what we are doing good, what we are doing not so good, and what and where we can improve. And based on this, we made a plan and we started to tackle just the few most important things that we should have been focusing on. And then I started talking with people, implemented those one or two changes. And within the next few months, I learned something very important from this experience. And that was important understanding the dynamics at play and then targeting the root problems. And I realized that it wasn't about putting more efforts into a meeting or doing completing all these roles and responsibilities. Astonishingly, astonishingly it was about working smarter, not harder. It was making the meetings more lively, more energetic, making people feel that they have joined the meeting. And we, and through this, we adopted a fail fast mentality. We were making continuous changes to our meetings and then keeping people engaging no to the meetings, no matter how small or how big the meetings were. And at the same time, keeping everyone involved in the meeting such that when they joined, they feel like they did something worth their time. And over the span of three months, our club experienced a remarkable transformation. Even most of our executive committee members sometimes couldn't make it to the meetings and our guests and members run it so successfully, so superbly. And the numbers spoke volume. Previously, where our meetings attracted only five to six people that, and often, they used to speak like everyone goes to sleep. Now, contrastingly, our meetings were starting to be 1.5 to 2 hours long and with 25 to 30 people attending Chen every meeting. And one of the most recent achievements that we thought we achieved as a club was during a club contest. And the response we got was really amazing. We've gone, we have gone from having only one or two contestants for all of our contests. Two, of hoping 13 contestants that we had in our last contest and with an audience of around 60 people. And it was so crowded that some people had to stand due to the lack of seats. 
we never expected so many people to attend our contest. And in conclusion, this journey reinforced me and my team with a famous quote that resonates with us. One's ability to adapt to change will determine the success in their life. As we embrace the change, address our core issues and revitalize our club, the change is inevitable. But our ability to embrace and navigate it is what truly defines us as leaders. Over, thank you, Toastmasters. Madam Toastmasters, over to you. Thank you so much. I found it astonishing to think how many clubs require this type of enthusiastic push. Work smarter, not harder. Isn't it amazing? Well, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our second speaker for today. Satish Menon will be giving us an educational session. So I believe he is not getting an evaluation today, but he will be speaking for 15 minutes. So would you please let us know the key time reminders that you would like our timer to make you aware of? Typically, it could be 10, 12 and a half and 15, or it could be 12, 14, 15, whatever you prefer. I would prefer uh, I would prefer 10, 12 and a half and uh, 15. Perfect. You got that, Namitha? Perfect. That makes great sense. Well, after hearing about surprises, we're in for a surprise to hear a special education session. And it may very well dovetail on the speech that Sparsh just gave us, because the title of it is Learn, Unlearn, and relearn. Do you love the theme? Please help me welcome Satish Menon. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Satish Menon, and I come from District 120 of Toastmasters International. Uh, I've been in Toastmasters from the year 2013 and just uh, signed off as the District Director of District 120 uh, for the term 2021. Uh, 2022. Now, a lot of people ask me, why did I get into Toastmasters? So the, my reason for getting into Toastmasters was very simple. I am a first generation IT entrepreneur who is now currently retired after having served two decades of IT experience. And I was no stranger to public speaking or communication because I had built up my organization from scratch with four other individuals. So speaking to the individuals, uh, standing in front of an audience and speaking, doing business presentations, these are all uh, quite, quite common to me. So a lot of people used to ask me, why did you join Toastmasters? And when I tell them that I joined Toastmasters because I felt people in my organization needed it. When I looked at uh, the my associates who worked with me, they were pretty young uh, people who just joined right out of college. And though they were technically very good, a lot of them still want, had that lack of communication and uh, interpersonal skills when it came to talking to customers and forget customers, even our employees across different business locations. And what is that we could do about it? And we did a lot of training programs for them, we did a lot of uh, personality development programs, but when all those programs were really good, but what used to happen is that once you finish the training and you come back, these manuals used to go inside the drawer and people would still go and uh, do what they used to do earlier, not ask questions, be afraid to ask questions, uh, be afraid to stand up and say no, not be very effective when you are speaking, be too technical when you are speaking to uh, business customers. And that is around that time that I encountered Toastmasters in a customer organization where I was handling a key account. And when I attended a couple of meetings there as a guest, I was quite perplexed as to why do these people need Toastmasters? They were one of the Fortune 
20 companies and they hired the best of the best in the country. So why do they need Toastmasters? So out of curiosity, I went and asked the country head who headed the operations in India. And uh, he said, well, when we work with our counterparts across different parts of the world, the feedback that we get is, though your people are technically very good, they need to develop a lot of communication and interpersonal skills. So for me, the first learning there was, yeah, the problem is universal. What my organization faces, even a bigger organization faces the same issue. And I said, then why don't I start something in for my company? So that's how I started Toastmasters Club in my organization. And since I started the club, they told me, you become the president of the club. Because I was the only person who knew something about Toastmasters because I had researched a lot before starting the club. And that's how my journey started. So the first learning for me was that the problem of communication, the problem of leadership, the problem of being effective when you're speaking, the problem of standing up and speaking in front of an unknown audience was a universal problem. It didn't matter whether you were a small organization or you were a Fortune 20 organization. The problem was universal. Now, when I joined Toastmasters and I started interacting with other Toastmaster members and then beyond my club at area division and all of that, the first thing that I learned or the second thing, the first thing I learned that this problem is universal of communication and leadership. The second one that I learned is keep your ego outside. And that was a very important lesson to learn. Because Toastmasters is a voluntary organization. Here, nobody is bound to listen to you. Unlike in a corporate world where you have the boss subordinate relationship and when the boss says something, you better listen to the boss, right? If you don't agree, then you know what are the options for you. But Toastmasters, uh, nobody's bound to listen because all of us are doing voluntary roles here. And the only way that you can get work done or the only way that you can uh, build your club or build your area, build your division, build your district is by way of collaboration and consensus. And ensuring that you take everybody along. Again, my being an entrepreneur for more than two decades and coming into Toastmasters actually meant nothing. I couldn't have walked in and said, look, I have two decades of experience. I want to be the district director. I won't do any of the other roles. One of the first roles that I did when I joined Toastmasters and there was an area contest and they said, can you do the sergeant at arms role? I was very happy. I didn't know what sergeant at arms was at that point of time. I knew at a club level, but at an area level, area contest, how to do it. So somebody taught me how to do it and said, this is what you do. And my club members, some of them were kind of horrified. They said, boss, why are you doing this? This is a small role, according to them. You should be taking a contest chair or you should be doing some other role. I said, no. This is good. It's a learning process. I'm new to Toastmasters, so let me start from doing the most basic roles. So there I was doing the sergeant at arms role. And then working with people who were, I would look at it and say some of them were lesser experienced in terms of the number of years of experience that they had. A lot of them were even younger in age compared to me. But they were holding higher positions in the area, division, and district. So you cannot say that I will not work with them. I had to kind of work with them. I had to work under them as part of a team. But that was a good learning. And that's where it taught me how to put your ego aside when you start working. And when you started working there, the third lesson that I learned is that everybody here is out to learn something. Nobody joins Toastmasters just for fun. There might be a population that joins for fun, but a lot of them 
join here to learn something. And that learning or that why of Toastmasters, as we call it, could be different for different people. I might be here. I joined because my organization needed it. Somebody might join because they would say, I need to improve to my public speaking. A third person would say, I want to get over my stage fright. A fourth person would say, I want to be the next. I want to carve out a career in public speaking. So I want to be the next district champion or the world champion of public speaking. A fourth person uh, would say, I have come here to develop effective learning skills or effective presentation skills. The why differs for everybody. So when you work as a team, when you work with your club, when you work with your area, when you work with your division and district, ensure that you understand the why of every individual. It's the only way that you will be able to help them. One size doesn't fit everyone. It was like, uh, I can't go and say everybody here needs public speaking, so let's do a course on public speaking. No. There are some people in the club who will not even attempt to give a speech. But they are there just for building that effective listening skill. So you tell them to take a role of, play the role of a tag team, they will play an effective role because they want to develop the listening skills. Some will contest. They're only in contest. They are not interested in doing any XCOM roles. They will only want to contest. The whys are different. So that was another learning for me to say everybody has a different why. So when they choose their why, be sure that you kind of help them to address that why. And that's how you can build a successful club and a district. The fourth new learning that I knew is that all these roles are transient roles. Everybody right down from a district director has got only one year in that role. Nobody can take an extension on the role and say, I'm going to sit here for ages or eternity. So in that one year, what is it that you can do? You can do a lot or you may choose not to do anything. It's up to you. But what I learned is that in that one year, if you can build a legacy that helps the district grow and build the next generation of leaders, you would have left your mark. Like when I was a district director, we said, we'll make a district which is a sustainable district. Our district got formed in the year 2021, 2020, sorry. We were just coming out of, or right in the midst of the pandemic and the lockdown. So the first two years of the new district, we were completely online. We had no in-person interaction with anybody. It's only during my term as district director that it slowly came out and we said we could have in-person meetings. So in the two years, the only way you could connect with people was online. The only way you could keep people engaged and enthused was online. But when we ended the term, we found that we had crossed the base where we started with. We were steadily distinguished in program quality. And we were just 300 membership short of being distinguished. But that's fine. I said, end of the day, you build a district, which is a sustainable district. You started clubs, ensure that those clubs survive. You ensure that those clubs continue to flourish. And you also have members who are keen to renew. So that learning for me was that if people see value, they will always come back to any forum including Toastmasters. It's all about providing that value. And how can you provide that value? A lot of people ask me, what do you mean by providing value? How can you provide value in Toastmasters? I tell the simple way to provide value in Toastmasters is to encourage everybody to be consistent at their club meetings. If you turn up for your club meetings consistently, if you take up roles in the club meeting, if you pursue your educational journey through the club by giving your speeches, by completing your levels and paths. Uh, if you help out in club XCOM roles or in roles outside the club, outside the area, outside the division, 
if you kind of contribute for initiatives like the youth leadership program or uh, speech craft or helping the district in another different initiatives, you are showing value to the member. Because in everything that the member does through these activities, they are achieving the why of why they are here in Toastmasters. So to derive value, to achieve greatness, you don't require to move mountains. You just need to go to your club every week, learn what you are here to learn, and also contribute what you are here to contribute for. And by that means, you will go further, you will become a better individual, and at the same time, you would have made a difference to the people around you. In our club, we always tell people that when you walk into your club meeting, always walk out a better version compared to the one which you were when you walked inside. So every meeting is a learning process. Every meeting is a growing process. And in every meeting, you not only learn, but you also share your experiences with others. And that, for me, has always been this entire journey of learn, unlearn, and relearn. The Toastmasters as a platform is something that allows you to experiment a lot. Experiment in terms of how you want to improve yourself. And with the kind of support system that we have, the kind of members that we have with us who will encourage you, support you. Even when you make mistakes, they will coach you rather than put you down or kind of tell you that you made a mistake, now leave the club. Uh, they'll always tell you, yes, this is where you can improve. Uh, with that kind of a system, I'm sure uh, every day for me has been a day of learning new things, unlearning things which I thought were good, but then over a period of time, you find, no, there are diff different ways of doing it. And also, meeting new people every day and learning a lot from them. It's not about the age or the experience here. It's all about what are the different perspectives that people bring on to the forum and how is it that you can improve by understanding those. So my motto in Toastmasters has always been to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And I'm still pursuing the why of why I've joined Toastmasters. Does that mean that I have not got my why? Some of the why I have already achieved, but there's a lot that I need to learn because life in it is always one that throws up a lot of new possibilities every day. And as and when you explore and learn, that is when you realize that how far you have to go and how far that you have come. Thank you. All the very best and happy Toastmaster. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Wow, I am so invigorated by that. What wonderful words of wisdom to be shared. I think all of us have those moments when we look back as to why we joined. And when we see new members, I think most of them are astonished at how well organized we are and how kind we are and how supportive we are of one another. I dare say most people don't know what to expect. And then they get those, how about this, Natalia? A happy surprise, a good surprise. That's better than I expected. And that's what we want to go forward to do. Well, our next portion of our meeting is where we exercise that opportunity to speak off the cuff, or we call impromptu, uh, one of the favorite parts of our club meeting, which is known as our table topics. And that is going to be led by our very own VPE, Siva. Please help me welcome Siva. Thank you, Titian. I'm audible and visible. You, you were okay. breaking up a little bit, so try again. Yeah, there is some network issue. Apology that for better. that. That sounds better. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, good evening, Toastmasters, and my dear guest. 
what is a table topic session it's an impromptu session anyone can talk one to two minutes even though we are well known the toastmaster anyone if give the topic if you talk in front of others is always surprise is always thrilling us what going to talk what will be there what will be the top whether we can challenge with others whether we can be best speaker there always will be the surprise so that's what we are a toastmaster we always have table topic session hope today we will get a chance to surprise others to prove ourselves as a best toastmaster best speaker as well so let me call who is going to talk first i will give the good topic maybe you can talk 1 to 2 minute so who is going to be going to be first okay nitalia okay. namita okay yeah so i'll go with nitalia then i'll come with namita is it fine mm -hmm. yeah. your topic is surprise is key in all art surprise is key in all art toastmaster natalia over to you natalia did you hear it clearly because i did not and i did that could you repeat the question please surprises i copied in the chat surprise the is key in all art yeah um <laughs> Um, thank, thank you for the question, Toastmaster Siva. Um, for me, it depends on what type of like um, art it is, because uh, you know, depending on what um, the the artist wanted with their piece. You know, it doesn't always have to be like a surprise. Um, they, uh, there's a lot of um, creatives that they have an intention in mind when they're working on a specific, um, specific painting or a specific, um, like, creative piece. Um, so yeah, it definitely depends on the intention of. Um, the artist but to look at the other side of it i think it i think it is nice sometimes when there's not an expected um intention with a piece of art a piece of art um because in those situations you know it's kind of subjective what um what you think of like what you think of like the piece of art when you look at it because you know everybody um everybody looks at things with a different perspective um so based off of that it's pretty subjective um but yeah thank you for the question Thank you, dear Toastmaster Natalia. Can you please give the huge round of applause to her for his wonderful act? Thank you. Let me go uh, next topic, uh, Namita. Are you ready to talk next? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. So your topic is sometimes. The best thing in life are unexpected. The topic is sometimes the best thing in life are unexpected. Over to Namita. Thank you, Shiva. For the Toastmasters and dear case, yes, I agree. Sometimes, not sometimes, almost all of the time. The best things in life are unexpected. And when it's a surprise, it's a delight. 
especially when it's a positive surprise, when you're not at all thinking about it, you are in your own world, happy, enjoying your life with positive thoughts, and you have this dream for a long time, and one fine day, you realize it, and it feels awesome, it feels amazing when you really achieve that dream of yours. And there are many times it has happened, not once or twice. There are many times it has happened in my life that I might have given up on something and it becomes reality. Or I would have something else in my mind for, say, the next five months. And I do something and I realize my childhood dream. For example, I saw a puppy at the end of my lobby in the apartment, apartment complex I'm staying. And I asked the guy, uh, where did you get this puppy from? And he gave me a number of a breeder. I went there and I have this childhood dream to own my pet, especially a cat and a dog. I went there, I fell in love with these three puppies. They were so cute. And now I have a puppy of mine. I realized a childhood dream. It was an impulsive decision, but I'm loving it. Trust me, it was hard in the first three days. After that, I got the hang of it. He's always happy to see me. He always wants to be around me. He always wants to play with me. Who won't want that kind of an enthusiasm, <laughs> whether it's a puppy or a person? And it's a Lhasa poo. He has white fur and it's a bit curly. And it's one of the best surprises I ever had. Because when I see myself holding him in the mirror, I never picturized it in my life ever holding my own dog and it happened. So yes, I agree with what you said, Shiva. Over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Namita. Can you please give the huge round of applause to that? Uh... Thanks from the one second sharing your experience. So let me go over next. Hello. Hello, am audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Siva, you, yeah. you there? Siva, right now you are not audible. Looks like he lost network connection. If he can take off his video, he should be able to go just audio. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm here, but uh, something network issue and Steve, Catherine's made the recommendation that perhaps you could use the chat and we could do that without your audio. I suppose this is perfectly in the theme of what we do. Surprise, <laughs> things don't always go according to plan. Siva, if you can hear us, can you type in your next question in the chat and we'll see if we can get a volunteer? If you're still there. He's now reconnecting to audio. Siva, try again.
well, I'm going to make a business decision as Toastmaster of the day. Rather than spending more time, we may wait just a little bit. We can return to the table topics after our evaluation section. So Siva, stay tuned. We may come back to you surprisingly if you get back on your sound rather than having the dead air and everybody just awaiting. So we are going to move on to the evaluation portion of our meeting, the third portion of all Toastmasters meetings. This is where we get the feedback that we so desire in our Toastmasters meetings. Not hearing the laundry list of things we did wrong, but to hear those things that we did well, in addition to some opportunities for improvement. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our club president, Jim Denson, as our evaluator. Please help me welcome Jim. Thank you again, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, everyone, and especially Thank you, Sparsh, for giving your speech tonight. Change is the only constant. You started by telling us about the astonishing challenge that one of your clubs faced. The challenge of why has our club lost its luster? And what can be done to get it back? And you did a very good job of making the challenge clear. And you all, you also had said that you began to develop certain goals for the club to get it back to where it is you want it to be. And just also, you had said that you wanted to make things more dynamic in the club because you noticed that the meetings had become less lively. And even some of the members who had been going there, even their enthusiasm had started to wane. So from that standpoint, you did a very good job making it, get, get, giving a very vivid example of where your club was and what the challenge was for you to help get it back on track and beyond. And you told us that fortunately, through hard work and through time and patience, you were able to, to have the club revitalize itself to the point where at one point, going from maybe one, two or three contestants in a contest to 13, which is unheard of. So we know from your speech that change is possible. The main suggestion that I would make in order to, to charge your speech with, with the jolt that you said that your club got Maybe give us one or two examples of exactly what you did in order to, um, you said, let's see, work smarter instead of harder. One concrete specific example of what you did, I think would have really given us, would, would, would have really connected your ideas even more effectively. Just one thing, just one example. It would it 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 would have made a big difference to make your great speech an even better one. But thank you for giving it to us because it has tremendous value. So thank you and continue speaking. Thank you so much, Jim. Now we go on to our additional functionary roles for those that have spent their time listening. Their listening skills were here. We're going to go first to our tag team led by our timer. Namitha, how did we do on timing today? Pretty good. Uh, whatever topics were on time, we only had two. And Spursh, I'm sorry, I forgot 
who changed the timer cards in your speech, but you spoke for six minutes, 30 seconds. And Satish, you spoke for 16 minutes. Apart from that, Jim spoke for three minutes and 23 seconds. Thank you, and over to you, Susan. Thank you. Next listening role that we had today was our awe counter, our sergeant at arms, Catherine Apondo. May I kindly share my screen? Is it possible? Great. We did very well. I'd like to give a round of applause to all of us. I think we did so well. If you look at my 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 spread, it has lots of green, meaning almost everybody had green spaces. It's just a few places where I think we would improve. And these are areas where we had um or us. I'd like to commend Namitha to improve that. Satish, only one um. Natalia, to improve thinking or slow down or just be conscious about not using the R and the arms. And then the other words that were mostly used were so and because like you know, even myself, I struggled with um. And so I want to thank everybody for being cautious about using post filler words. Thank you very much. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Catherine. We do appreciate the visual along with the audio report. We now will hear from our grammarian, Natalia. How well did we do today? Thank you, Toastmaster Susan. Um, is it possible to share my screen? I think it yes. might be things a little easier. Okay. Let's see. Okay, um, so today um, we got a lot of people using the word of the day, so congrats to the people that used it. Um, we First, we have Sparsh, he did use it. Um, one suggestion that I would make is uh, you, you said number spoke volume. Uh, this is supposed to be number spoke volumes. Um, so just that minor change just um, with volumes. Um, and then one thing that you did that I liked was using navigating through rough waters in a dark ocean. Um, I thought that was a really creative, um, just a creative statement. Um, and then next, Satish, uh, I don't believe he used it unless I like zoned out and I wasn't paying attention, but um, one suggestion I would make is uh, instead of um, lesser experience in terms of experience, uh, I would just shorten it and just do less experience. So just shorten it and keep it short and sweet. Um, but one positive thing I liked was when you said one size doesn't fit everyone. Um, that was a good, a really good statement. Um, so good job to both of you. And then next, yeah, we didn't have that many table topics. Um, but we, yes, uh, Susan did use the word of the day, um, multiple times. So congrats to Susan. And then Namitha did not use it. Um, and I did not use it. And then Jim did use it. Uh, but just going back to Namitha, um, yeah, one suggestion I would make is just um, instead of picturize, I would just say pictured um, because it's a little bit, I think it's like a different meaning associated with picturized. Um, but yeah, um, 
And then Jim, uh, something that I liked was when you used revitalize itself. Um, yeah, I thought that was like a unique word that I hadn't really heard a lot. Um, but good job to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And me, uh, Natalia, I want to give you congratulations. You're one of our newer members and you did a fabulous job as grammarian. So thank you very much. I know those of us who are a little more experienced, we can sometimes zone out and forget we're doing the role because we're so engrossed in the speeches. So I hope you did get some benefit of the speeches, maybe even watching the video again later where you can relax and actually hear what they say in their content. That would be delightful. I want to say we've come to the close of our meeting, but I would like to say extra special thanks to our two speakers, both of whom were guests today, and both had extraordinary lessons for us to help revitalize our clubs, both in the theme from Sparsh as well as from Satish. We are small but mighty. We are going to get there. We had a major fall off of membership for multiple reasons at last year, but I want to say that we're strong. Those of us that are members are here most of the time, and we only have a few more that haven't come back yet that have renewed, but we are going to get there, we promise. But in the meanwhile, I want to say a special heartfelt thank you. What a pleasant surprise it was today for me to have two guest speakers and both giving us a message that we so desperately need to remember, why are we here? Why are we, do we do this? I personally have been in Toastmasters since 1995. So people ask, why do you still come back? And my answer to everyone is, how sad would it be if I got what I needed and then left? I'm here to give back. And having earned a DTM, I'd like to rename it as dedicated to mentoring. That's what I try to do, to mentor others, to help them along. I love seeing these smiling faces on the screen. They certainly helped us get through the pandemic lockdown, for heaven's sakes. Without it, most people I know were literally climbing the walls with nothing to do. And I'm like, nothing? Are you kidding me? I'm so surprised. I'm seven days a week visiting, joining, and being a part of. This has been a saving grace for many of us to be happy, healthy. And I love seeing smiles on the screen, don't you? Isn't that a pleasant surprise, whether you're starting your day, Catherine, or ending our day uh, for those of us on the East Coast of the U.S., we're just so delighted that you were able to be here. I am now going to turn control of the meeting back over to our club president, Mr. Jim Denson. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmaster, for doing such an excellent job and for just, um, just giving the praise where it belongs to each one of us to keep us going and to keep things positive. It's it's just, just, just an excellent um, use of the meeting's energy. I would just like, before we adjourn, to give Sparsh and Satish an opportunity to just say, what tonight's meeting was for them, their 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 view of things. Whoever would like to speak first, e e either uh, Sparsh or Satish, uh, briefly. Well, I'll I'll go first. Sure. For me, uh, this meeting was, I, in my opinion, a very good meeting because I always believe that uh, in Toastmasters, uh, it's not the number of people who are in a meeting that matter. Uh, it's how effective the meeting is. And in today's meeting, what I saw was we had all the segments of a Toastmasters meeting very well covered in this one hour. We had two speeches, we had table topics, we had uh, evaluations, and we had the tag team reports. And each one of those segments was very, very informative, and there was a lot of 
a lot of learning to it. And what I also found is the enthusiasm of these group. We are all joined in from different time zones. But again, like that, that didn't show on anybody. All of us were very enthusiastic. It was all about like just meeting in physically in a room and having the meeting. So that I like that energy. I like the feedback that we got for our uh, of my speech. And of course, for the I heard the feedbacks for the other speech and also for the entire uh, meeting. And that's uh, that's what is something great I find about this club that the energy levels and uh, the way we get constructive feedback for whatever we do in the meeting. So I would say keep up uh, the energy, keep up the good work, and I'm sure yours will be a club that will grow and help members as it as it progresses. Thank you, and back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so, Jim, I would like to say a few words. Uh, sure. Till now, I didn't feel like even if I was sitting in a virtual meeting, I was so involved during the meeting. It felt so lively till now that I just forgot that we are all sitting here virtually. It just felt as if I'm attending some in-person meeting. So one of the things that I mentioned during my speech also is I visited a lot of clubs where people do all the roles. But here, when I come to this club and I see all the role players coming, doing their roles, it just feels there is a different sense of energy how everyone put their efforts to make this meeting. Not good, but great. So it was a really, really great experience. And kudos to everyone who took up roles and performed it very well. So yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And just very quickly, I want to also uh, give appreciation to Siva, given the technical difficulties with your audio, but that didn't stop you from putting some of the table topics questions in the chat. So you gave an example of being adaptable and that really was very helpful to us tonight. So I wanted to thank you for your persistence. It really was a great example for us tonight. So thank you again. Our next meeting is October 12th. And we need to have some of the roles uh, filled for next week's meeting. We have one person confirmed as a speaker thus far, and um, there are other roles to be filled. And right now, I can volunteer myself.